the flash back by harry reichenbach we all make mistakes that's why they keep the stuff in showcases at tiffany's if we was always right there wouldn't be no need of putting rubbers on lead pencils but how a strong guy like achilles w coombs ever let that frail wren hemstitch herself onto his sleeve i can't figure and i've been all the way up to mixed fractions too Achilles was strong every way excepting with women. A plain everyday skirt hanging on a clothesline gave him a thrill, so imagine the osteopathic touch a swell-looking dame handed him. I said Achilles was strong. He must have been born strong to get that name, but I guess the W sort of alibis him. It must stand for weak fist. Achilles was a director for the Omnipotent Film Company. You'll note I said was. He is now entirely ex officio, if that means out of a job. By the way, how do you like the name Omnipotent? I made that up out of my own head. It means that our pictures is everywhere, all the time. Well, Achilles is with us no more. But he was a bear while he lasted. He made a couple of junk pictures, but when he did make a good one, it was okay to the last fade-out. To get to the narrative, as they say in the old sleuths, Achilles was getting ready to put on her blighted career, and was looking for a perfect thirty-six to double for Louise Mazurka. Louise was our principal, permanent, prominent star. That is, she was the only one who ever knew she was going to work the next week. Louise's fiancé was our finance, and Louise just run the omnipotent about like Cook runs his tours. Personal. Louise had a couple of morals that stuck out like a sore toe. Two of them was that she would not appear in a bedroom scene or play the part of a model. She was what one might term a salad star, needed lots of dressing. In her blighted career there was a scene where Louise would have to peel down to just a few degrees above the equator, and as Louise would not do that, well, we wanted a double who had a narrow waist and a broad mind. We made a mistake when we let Achilles select the cast for her blighted career, but then, as he would have had too many excuses if the picture flivved, we let him have his way. Achilles advertised in one of the moving picture papers for a perfectly formed young lady, weight about 125, with or without stage experience, to play an important part. Applicants were to apply to the studio, direct to Achilles. There wasn't any. Not a one. There ain't a soul in the world who wants to get into the movies. Oh, no. The only thing that kept all the women in the world from applying was the war in Europe. But Alatia arrived ahead of her time. Alatia, be it known, was a newcomer at Fort Leo. She got into town at 9.45, read the advertisement at 9.48, and was at the studio at 10.10. 10. Achilles was right in the middle of a scene in silent drama, aided by carpenter's hammers, sliding scenery, and considerable conversation. I guess they call it silent drama because the noise gives out before the release. Achilles was developing a situation. Alicia was developing a desire, and when she threw out a beacon to Achilles, summer turned right into the home stretch, and flowers bloomed on all sides. Alicia came from a small town in Minnesota, and was just about the finest bit of frailty the Berg had ever turned out. She had those question department eyes that make a man dissatisfied with his income, and anything Houdini could do with his hands would have been child's play for Alicia's lamps. Alicia walked around the doorman as if he was Ramtard's remains, and, laying one radiating finger on Achilles' pulsing wrist, grabbed off the job of substitute for Louise. If Achilles had been a king, he would have handed her the crown jewels. Achilles did wonderful work that day, and when, hours later, he sat down to dinner with Alatia and ordered leg of lamb, he knew he was gone. Any other time Achilles would have ordered the leg of a piano. He played the quantity restaurants off the boards. 
his off-hand thumb was all chafed from pushing nickels in at the automat yet rectors and churchills was too cheap for him when alatia was anchored alongside louise was called in to look alatia over and after taking a peep at alatia's coastline and knowing she herself would get full credit for any goods alatia delivered she okayed her and the thing was set being press agent par excellence for the omnipotent achilles sent for me to come to his office one day about a week after he had named his favorite street after his queen dave he said i want you to watch me put alatia through some scenes i've been bringing her out a little she's got great timber and when he said that he stroked her hand i got to hand it to achilles though he sure made that dame act a little i ain't going to tell everything that went on because achilles had his own way of bringing her out and being in love sort of why well it wouldn't be fair but that alatia would never create any novel methods of burning up the universe i was sure they did one scene from a picture achilles had made a few months before and alatia ate it up but she had a couple of words with achilles about kissing do you have to kiss me really just to make me act right she cracks achilles felt hurt he was as happy as a guy with neuralgia and comes back no no you don't ever have to kiss me alatia but don't blame it on me if you are dead in your scenes but then i won't tell any more yet about the scenes louise began nosing a rodent and wanted to know from achilles whether this dame meant more to him than food and drink louise never looked ahead that is not more than five minutes when she looked at all and outside of knowing exactly how to handle a rummy with a bundle of sugar her mind was always at perfect repose achilles never looked anywhere except over his shoulder while alatia could see farther into the distance than any honest-to-goodness clairvoyant ever born alatia was always four jumps ahead she kept her lead and when she looked back at louise and achilles at all she did it with eyes closed for the day well the time came for the beginning of her blighted career and as it was to be our masterpiece we pulled off everything at the studio so as to have all the time we wanted to get the sets ready and rehearse the troupe achilles worked something like a flivver motor he went along all right until he was actually needed then something gave out he was normal walked all right carried matches and everything but seemed a little brittle in the belfry when alatia was talking to anyone else at the studio you could have stolen achilles ideas and he wouldn't have missed them he worked with one eye on his job and the other one trailing alatia he was so jealous he wouldn't even trust himself with her louise asked him one day whether he was working or dreaming both comes back achilles i'm dreaming of the day i can take alatia and make her one of the great figures of the screen universe well louise cracks just go on like you are and the day is only a couple of weeks away when you can devote all your time to that idea but then the significance of the remark failed to penetrate achilles bean and he went about his work as though he was doing everything on credit not putting his heart into it at all alatia began superintending the picture with the first shot according to her the photoplay business started a week late and she was personally sent down by providence to bring it up to date knowing as much about picture work as she did about anything else which was thirty love in favor of minus she made suggestions to achilles in the presence of the whole outfit which if they had been carried out would have made the birth of a nation look like a split reel comedy on the old trust program she wanted to slam louise into the distance so far she would blend with the backdrop and when it came time to show her bare and shimmering back it required four crews of construction experts to keep her from peeking over her shoulder at the camera louise had a little talk with achilles that night and tagged him for no man's land you have the symptoms of a man seeking from office to office for an activity she told him hoping to cure him of alatia itis but achilles was always disappointing 
he admitted that he had never yet fulfilled anyone's expectations even when he was a kid he says his mother treated him for measles and he went ahead and developed hives well between luis and alatia achilles must have felt something like the middle of a rope in a tug of war if louise turned to the right alatia made a little sound like a squirrel cracking a nut which helped louise wonderful knit if achilles ordered alatia to lean forward so her bare back would show she would but she managed to get her profile into the shot from some angle so it went everything moved along at the studio like as if there was a couple of lost trenches that had to be gotten back before sunset every day even the extra people fell to battling among themselves old joe hooker who hadn't had two consecutive days work since gus daly made his last coast-to-coast -coast trip got to acting independent like and wanted fifty cents a day more achilles couldn't be severe even with him joe was playing the part of a sneak in the picture and had been registered in a set that was broken up and we had to fall for his demands there was a guy who had been rubbing a cookbook over his stomach for years standing out for a four-bit raise and alatia was to blame she had come over the ferry with joe that morning and told him how to work it joe just asked for a raise told achilles that alatia had suggested it and he got it louise phoned presently for her fiance he was a little fat guy named finkelstein fink as louise called him was puffing like a tired hound when he came into the studio louise grabbed him and in a few minutes achilles was sent for i happened to be there on business and sort of strolled into louise's dressing room just as fink opened up what's the big idea he spills are you making a picture for us or making alatia for you achilles was taken back on the level he was surprised to give the sucker his dues i don't think he ever thought he was doing wrong he was so mushy over alatia that when he committed an error he forgave himself in advance why what's wrong he asks finkelstein is the stuff punk or what punk no says fink but what in hell do you think i'm putting all this kale up for for you to make this wild woman from minnesota poor achilles it all came to him about like a joke comes to an englishman he grabbed it and let it sink in i guess i know what you mean he sort of mumbles i guess i'm so much in love with her i didn't think well i'm in love too puffs finkelstein but it ain't got me all bruised up achilles was all busted to pieces fink was sure riled louise just sat nice and quiet like a tarantula before he slips you the old front tooth achilles is shifting from one foot to another fink is fingering a big watch charm louise is waiting to rattle her buttons before she bites when who comes busting into the room but alatia if achilles was no bigger in size than he felt right then he would have had to take a stepladder to kiss a kitten on the lower lip but alatia that gal just about was built to run strikes and things and urge men to dynamite bridges and pull other happy stunts what's the idea she busts out of keeping me sitting around like back to nature while you people hold services i ask what's the idea louise slips the old poison dope right into her stinger and cuts loose i said louise never did much forward gazing why you little pup get out of this room what the devil do you mean trespassing on a lot of professionals go on out and bear your brazen back and then when you've done that go up and tap the cashier on the shoulder for your soup money louise as i said looked backward when she looked if she had looked ahead just one minute she would have put armor plate on and prepared for a charge when we picked louise up off the floor and fink's coat was unhooked alatia had achilles by the hand and was pulling him out into the studio being no favorite at the bank and having no assets outside my job i stuck around brushed louise off and suggested killing alatia just you keep this out of the papers cracks louise i'll take care of her turning to finkelstein she says go on out and pay them bums off and get em out of here before i do something desperate 
but Fink was looser pursed than jointed. It took an hour to do it, but it was worth it, for Louise, entirely subdued, came out and went through the couple of scenes. Alicia continued to conduct things her own way, and when the picture was finished in a couple of days, Achilles and Alicia were told to leave the omnipotent studio and never to darken the doorway again. About the picture? What's the use? We took a slant at it in the projection room. If you could see a play where George Cohen came on for a scene and then Nat Goodwin played the part in the next scene, you'd have some idea of the consistency of it. It was the nearest approach to a feature with a succotash lead that's ever been made. Alicia's face stuck out in every scene. If she was not on stage, she got her map in just the same even if it was only from the edge of the camera line. Louise was just about as important in the picture as Brian is to this noble land of the free. When Louise was in a scene, Alicia's shoulder or arm was just out far enough over her face to cut off a couple of her features. Finkelstein hated to do it, but he had to put the old negative in mothballs. It was sure a dual personality affair, and even Achilles couldn't have been able to tell which was the leading woman when any one was leading. We put the picture on the shelf and sent out a hurry call for another director. But about the budding romance of Achilles and Alatia, the rumor spread that we had a punk picture, which helped Achilles not a little in staying idle. But he was busy with his heart pangs. Every night the two turtle doves, basing the remark on Achilles' ostentatious behavior, would trail into one of the bizarre coaling stations along Broadway, and while Achilles daintily nibbled on the corner of a three-pound steak, Alatia would ply him with questions. She wanted to work. She wanted to know when her blighted career would be shown, and if she was to be co-starred or just featured. Achilles was afflicted with various torments. His bankroll was becoming more frank with him every day. He was not in demand. He could not get admittance to the big producer's offices, and Alatia was becoming impatient waiting for her second chance. I lost track of them for a couple of weeks, but once in a while I got a tip that they were railroading farther apart every day. Achilles was offered a couple of jobs, but when he sprang Alatia on them, he rolled right out of the prospects. About a month after we got astigmatism from looking at her blighted career, I met Achilles on Broadway. Every flagstone in the street knew his footsteps. His feet were not under his own control any more. They simply carried him from one office to another in search of work. "'I haven't eaten today,' was his first crack when I slip him the hello. I fell, and we vamped into one of those get-full-quick hasheries. "'Well,' I pulls, "'what you got in sight?' "'Nothing but the skyline,' he comes back at me. "'Well,' I wells again, you got Alatia. You must be very, very happy. Yes, he said, happy. Ha! Huh, just like I had a cinder in my eye. What's the idea? Ain't you happy with her? I'm not with her, he says. I'm against her. Then it comes out. After Achilles has spent a month, a few hundred dollars, and made more sacrifices for her than the Israelites made crossing the Syrian desert, Alatia took a choo-choo and went da-da with a low-browed technical guy. But it was funny the way she slipped him the bad news. They was eating dinner one night at a surefire restaurant. That's one of those places where the maximum is fifty megs. You don't worry about the sorrowful paper they slips you, but no, you can't get set back more than a caser for two. Alatia cracks something about having something in mind, and Achilles comes back with the staring eyes and querying voice as to what it might be. I met Dean Rollins, technical director of the Porterhouse Film Company, today. He's leaving for the coast and says if I was out there, they'd play me like a country club. If there was anything in the world outside Poison Ivy that Achilles hated, it was Dean Rollins. He rolls right off my knife, says Achilles. I couldn't make him even mixing him with mashed potatoes. He is nix. Maybe, Alicia responds, but he certainly has grabbed himself a great piece of activity with Griffith. He's going to work steady-like, and he dropped a hint he could fix you and I if I would go out with him and then shoot you a wire when to come. 
well achilles got all muscle bound in the head like he said something about not wanting the woman of his heart doing a tour of the world with a weak-minded carpenter when alicia takes exceptions and asks him if he thought she wasn't straight of course you're straight achilles howls but he didn't get away with anything for alicia pushed her plate away which was unusual for her and pulls the old tear material sure-fire stuff achilles didn't suspect a thing until a day or two later when he lamps into alicia in front of the aster talking to rollins he pulls a w j burns for a little while and sees them slowly growing closer together then he walks around the block in time to meet alicia i begin thinking said achilles that maybe he was making her a lot of promises and i asked her about it well she says i don't want to violate no confidences but we were having a little committee meeting on what's what at los angeles and i'm beginning to think that california without me is like california without oranges get me that was all achilles ever sees of her she just eased herself out of his young life like as though she was a spook and achilles felt just like getting through with things and matters human entirely he took bluebeard's point of view in toto achilles comes back to the omnipotent in a couple of weeks he's taken the ku klux klan oath against females and from now on is going to disperse his affections nonchalant alicia's back in town she made such a hit in los angeles they couldn't stand her no more but she's posing for a child's restaurant now she's the sandwich model there and maybe you don't think they're cutting them thin these days with the war and everything.